Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at the LMT MRP external piston reliability and durability. Now we have a little bit of story time to go back because I go back uh, to the beginning of this system. Uh, around 2003-2004 I was running Black Rifle 2 and I was looking at the uh, Leitner Weiss Rifle Company 499 and Paul Leitner Weiss invited me down to Milan, Illinois uh, for a demonstration he was doing for the Coast Guard. Well, lo and behold, uh, that was LMT's place uh, in Milan, Illinois, and that would be the first time that I would meet Carl Lewis. And we were out at the demonstration, and that was the first time I saw the prototype of the MRP with the removable barrel, interchangeable barrel. And he happened to have one there that was chambered for the 499 Leitner Weiss rifle cartridge. cartridge. And uh, that was the first time that I fired, fired it. So I got to know Carl Lewis a little bit. I got very interested in the MRP system, and I was right at the tail end of riding Black Rifle 2. And I was extremely impressed with the prototype that I saw, so I asked Carl if I could include it in my book, and of course, you know, he said yes. Well, around uh, probably around six months later, uh, after I got back and the book was sent in, um, I had asked Carl, I'd like to take a look at it a little bit more close. Now, at this point, it was still a prototype. It hadn't been released to the public yet. He had sent me over... Uh, are the examples of his MRP with his, um, let me see, the 11.5, the 14 and a half, and the 16 inch 5.56 barrels. And he also sent me a case of M855, a crate of M855, to do some testing for him and to tell him what I thought, you know, which I did. The system, you know, ran flawlessly in all three. We fired a lot of full auto. So now we, we're going to jump forward to around 2004. Uh, 2004, I left uh, in Wisconsin and I was back in Rochester. I just started writing for Small Arms Review, Small Arms Defense Journal. And I asked Carl if he would send me, uh, you know, ones to review. And at this time, he had just released it uh, for, for public uh, sales. So he sent me two rifles. Uh, he sent me one that was set up with his standard MRP system, a uh, 5.56 internal piston. And he also sent me one with his new external piston. I was quite surprised when I had saw this because, you know, speaking with Carl, he was very adamant, much the same way I was. We believed in the, the merits of the internal piston system over the external piston. So I, co I contacted him. I said, Carl, what would you do this for? He said, because of the customer request. Customers requested it. And at that time was when we had all this stuff going on with the HK416 and the M4 being inferior and uh, all the problems supposedly the M4 had. So people were looking into uh, you know, the, uh, the external piston systems. So reviewed the rifles. Uh, I put, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred rounds through the, uh, the external piston gun and put it away. And quite frankly, I put it away up until about maybe eight months ago. I have extensive experience with the LMT MRP system, and I absolutely love it. I think it's the best platform that's out there. And I use the internal piston system, and that's what I've been using all these years. I never really gave much thought to the external piston system at all. I didn't give any thought to it until I heard about the Estonia contract that LMT got. This was the first uh, contract that LMT has had for the external piston system on a infantry level, not as a special operations, but as an infantry level. So I figured maybe it's time I should take a look at it. Contacted LMT. I got my hands on a 12.5 and a 14.5 inch barrel. Uh, I had had my 16 inch barrel that had been sitting in my gun case for what, 10, 15, or 15, 8, 15, 16 years. Uh, that I hadn't really paid too much attention to it. And I said I wanted to do some testing of my own on it to see just how, how durable and reliable it was. Now, looking at the, the external piston system an LMT has, it is an extremely simple system. It is your standard push rod, and it has an uh, adjustable gas valve two positions. It has a, uh, a, a, a standard position, and it has a suppressed position. You have a button in the... And then on the side, you push inwards and you rotate it halfway, pull out, and we have the operating rod, piston head, and we have the valve, two position gas valve. Now, the LMT system does utilize gas rings. And why do we use gas rings on, on an external piston system? What this does is it seals up the expansion chamber, requiring a lot less gas being used. And you also don't have to over gas it, meaning like an AK, because you have you know, all that gas full back, blowback that goes. Uh, to, to, you know, through you know, buy it, you have to you have to compensate for all that gas loss. With this, you don't have that system or that problem. So basically, that seals right into that gas valve, and it requires just enough. Now, these have been set up a couple different ways. The rifle that I got back in 2004 is the rifle that you see right here. 
This rifle here is uh, the exact one of the two rifles I kept one of them, and the other one went back, but I did keep the external uh, piston system uh, to go along with the system. As you can see here, this one says LMT. This was a, a marketing lower receiver. This was not one that LMT normally sells. They sell. They put the LMT on there for sales, so for trade shows, and for T&E guns. So I decided to keep it so I guess the guns were special because it was one of their marketing guns, not one of their standard production guns. So this was, this is, as it is here, set up with a 16-inch barrel. Now, the 16-inch barrel, the way it was set up, uh, it was for commercial ammunition, meaning you had a very wide selection of ammunition going from Wolf all the way up to a 5.56 NATO, so you have pressures that go all the way. So this was set up for both. You did have the two positions for suppressed. As you can see, I do have a, a, a ASR mount on here, so I have shot this one suppressed in the past, uh, just, not, just not too much. Now, we're going to go over the bolt carriers as well. Uh, but we're talking a little more about the barrel. Now the barrel on here has a much wider gas port because it allows you to use the lower quality uh, wolf ammunition that has lower pressure ports. So the system tends to be a little bit over gassed and it'll work with you know, pretty much the full range of ammunition. Now the other two that I have were designed for military purposes, the 12.5 and the 14.5. Uh, they were set up for uh, NATO spec ammunition. If you were to put the lower pressure ammunition, and chances are they wouldn't cycle. I tried some lower pressure 223 in here and I had problems with the bolt locking back in the last shot. And occasionally I would have short stroking with uh, this lighter powered ammunition. But if you were to put 5.56 NATO ammunition, with, which is what these specific barrels were designed for, it ran like a sewing machine. Now, if you wanted to open up the gas ports on here for more more commercial use, for uh, use with commercial ammunition, it would work the same way this one does. It would take the lighter lighter pressure ammunition. However, the 12.5, maybe not. Because even, even in the best short barrel ARs, uh, they have a hard time firing the wolf ammunition. But uh, again, first rifle I had, the 16 inch barrel. Now, we're taking a little bit of a look at the bolt carriers. The first rifles came with this manganese phosphate bolt carrier. You can see it's a one-piece carrier, uh, similar to mostly what you see out there. It came with a standard bolt. Uh, the LMT system does not use a proprietary bolt at all. Uh, it uses a standard, MR, a standard uh, 556 uh, mil spec bolt. However, they have now come out with a specific one for uh, Estonia, which as you can see is not cut for the gas rings. So this would be more of the current production. Uh, the earlier production ones would all have just standard uh, M16, M4 type bolts. Now, many of you have probably seen the video that Iraq veteran did uh, on the destruction testing where he used the uh, MRP uh, system with the external piston. And there was an issue with the peening of the, uh, this impact area on the carrier. That was, a, that was an issue that LMT uh, was not aware of, uh, and it was an issue with the softness of it. LMT did some redesigning work on this, and that was the introduction of the new nickel-plated uh, bolt carrier. Uh, the bolt carrier has been specifically uh, machined for full auto use, so it eliminates that problem. Uh, and all the current production ones are like this. If you were to have an older one, if you were to have a semi-automatic only, you would never see a problem. I think it was just, uh, I'm not sure whether it was just that specific uh, batch of bolts that Iraq veteran had or if it was a larger problem, I don't know. But it was enough that LMT fixed it and they went with, uh, with this one. And this is the one that has been used by Estonia, which has gone through all the durability and reliability testing. Now, this is the one that I have in my rifle, but you see the bolt that I have in here is the, uh, is the enhanced bolt. I put the enhanced bolt in all my LMTs that I have. Every single one of them has it. Um, I think it's the best uh, you know, improvement you can have of any upgrade you can do for a bolt carrier. Uh, the most durable bolt, I think, is in the industry. The other thing I added was the cam pin here. This is the POF roller cam. Uh, this does a much better job by not marring up the uh, upper receiver around the cam pin area. It uh, does a lot better on not wearing the inside of that, uh, which you do tend to see that happen a lot more with uh, the external piston versions than you do the internal. So I feel this is, a, is an up, upgrade. Is it necessary? No. Uh, it's something that I found that I do like. Another thing that was done for the Estonia contract, which I was really happy to see, is LMT now has a captive firing pin retaining pin on the, the newer production Estonia uh, bolts carriers for the firing pin. I have been, uh, actually I've been asking Carl to do this for a long time. I, thought, I don't know why this has been something that they've been put on everything, but uh, they do have it on the, uh, the, the newer ones. So that's really the, the lowdown on that. The other change that was made here is if you look at the back, the original ones here were much thicker, and these ones here are hollowed out. The only reason for that would be the fact that uh, this one's designed so you can put the, the, the extremely short uh, 
stock assembly, which utilizes a shorter buffer. This will take the, the, the weight insert uh, for, to stop the bolt carrier bounce that's required in that smaller uh, stock assembly. Now, the purpose of this video, obviously, is to talk about the, the mechanics of the, of the external piston system, but it's a do we've been doing a lot of shooting because what I want to know is what the reliability is of it. The interesting thing about the Estonia contract, in fact, I've, you know, I've been part of uh, weapons replacement programs and demonstrations all over this planet, over 30 countries, and this is very, very new to me. And the requirements, the Estonian army said that they wanted external piston for health reasons. They felt that the internal piston blew gas and debris back that would cause lead and barium and poisoning into the soldier. Never have I heard that in my life, but that was one of the requirements. And that also goes to the, the wisdom of Carl Lewis way back in 2004, 2005, when he said, I'm making it because a customer may want it. So that way, when the time comes up where a contract like Estonia comes up where it says, I want an external piston system, they're not going to pull a Colt and say, well, this is better. This is what you want. No, they're going to give the customer what they want rather than send that business to somebody else. So I wanted to see the durability and reliability. Accuracy was not a, was not a concern. The barrels that you're seeing on here are the exact same barrels that are used in their internal piston uh, systems. The only change to it is the is the gas block, which uh, you add the the operating rod and the, and the gas valve. That's the only difference. And these barrels can be sub MOA. I was I did some some informal shooting with these, and I was getting getting around an inch and a half to two inches. Uh, I wasn't really trying for precision groups, but the accuracy with uh, all three barrel lengths was fine. So you're going to be seeing a lot more firing. You're going to be seeing some suppressed. You're going to be seeing some. Uh, a lot of full auto uh, as well because we just want to see how durable these things are. The first one we're going to test fire is going to be the 16 inch. Now the 16 inch uh, only fired a few times, you know, a few magazines because it's been used in the past. Know that it works. So what we're going to use we're take this one to the range. We're going to put a few magazines through it. As you can see, no issues whatsoever. Uh, this was this one particular one here was only fired on semi-automatic. The only modification that was made to this gun was the addition of the uh, gas buster charging handle because of the suppressor use. And the other thing that was done was the addition of the I added the, the Norgon Ambi magazine release, which is another thing that I do like as well. Next, we're going to look at the SBRs. When you take a look at this, is a standard 10.5 internal piston barrel. When you take a look, you'll see that the gas block on the external piston is forward, meaning this is much more closer to a mid-length gas system for reliability to increase dwell time to allow the cartridge case more time to contract. Now, the 14-inch barrel is probably the one we did the most testing with. The barrel that was bought by Estonia was a 14.3 rather than a 14.5. That was a requirement. I'm not sure why. Uh, that was what they wanted, so that's what LMT gave them was the 14.5. And as you see, I have an ASR mount on here. Now, like with all... Uh, Rifles, you do get, get you get gas blow back into the face. With the external piston system, it is far less than the internal. You still do get some because you still get that pressure that's going back through the chamber. But it was very, very minimal. With a gas buster charging handle on it, it wasn't a problem either semi or fully automatic. 
And this is the one that we probably did the most rounds. We did well over 2,000 rounds. Uh, most of the ammunition that we had tested was Black Hills uh, 223 Full Metal Jacket. Uh, we had also had some of the Black Hills 5.56 millimeter 55 grain ammunition. Uh, and we, we had some samples of some other ones, but those were the primary ones that we did use. I did even try some Mark 262, uh, Mark 262, which is standard 556 load. And the system was absolutely flawless. This happens to be my favorite of all of these setups that you have with the uh, external pin system is the 14.5 inch barrel. When you look at the ballistics, the 12.5, you're losing a lot. You're losing a lot of velocity. You're losing a lot of penetration power. You're losing a lot of hydrostatic shock. Uh, you don't have the terminal performance that you do. 14.5 uh, is certainly better uh, by a long shot. Ideally, a 16. 16 happens to be my, my favorite overall uh, barrel length. But that was the issue that came up with the uh, the, the shorter barrels is you just lose too much. So now we're going to switch over to the rifle that we see here. This was the host barrel for both the 14.5 and the 12.5. On the 12.5 inch barrel, unfortunately, I wasn't able to fire suppress, and there's a reason for that. The If you were to put the ASR mount on here, you would be unable to remove the uh, the gas valve and op rod for, for cleaning and maintenance. You have to have a direct thread uh, on here for the, for the suppressor, and unfortunately, I didn't have an adapter for it. This is something I do plan on revisiting in the future. Now, I will say with the Estonia contract, they made it, uh, some modifications to the gas valve to make it more easily uh, manipulable uh, rather than having to push in uh, on the side and rotate the way that it did. They made some improvements. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to take a look at that up, up close yet. Hopefully, I will in the near future. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this one to the range and we're going to see how this one shoots uh, both semi and fully automatic.
The weapon using standard 5.56 millimeter ammunition performed absolutely flawless. Uh, the accuracy, again, was 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 certainly up to par what you would expect with any 12.5 inch barrel. Uh, recoil was good. Now, with all barrels, the H2 buffer is used. Due to the fact you have a much more violent opening stroke with an external piston over an internal, you do need that extra weight in there. Uh, also, the barrels on here are slightly heavier than, than the GI as well, so it also helps you with bolt carrier bounce. All LMT external piston rifles will come with a buffer. This particular lower receiver is a is SBR, an LMT lower receiver uh, that we had the H2 buffer in. Now, I want to thank Brandon over the gun room for providing the full auto lower receiver that we used to do most you know, all of our full auto testing. With the proper ammunition, meaning well-made ammunition, this thing is a it's a sewing machine. Uh, you'll see from a lot of the high-speed videos where you'll see the ejection patterns are consistent and they're 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 normal. You have a great uh, rate of fire on here. So the system is excellent. Now, here's the big question: Do I feel that the external piston is better than the internal? I will say this rifle was as reliable as the uh, internal piston. Uh, I will not say that it's better. I will not say that it's worse. Also, I will say that it's just as good because an L LMT internal piston rifle using proper mil spec ammunition, I don't see any difference in reliability at all. The other thing that you will also notice is for as far as durability is concerned, what's going to cause a rifle like this to fail is not going to be whether it's internal piston or external piston. It's going to be temperature. If you were to take this rifle here with a, uh, say, a 14.5 inch barrel, with an internal piston and then take it with a, another rifle with an external piston and you were to fire to destruction, the barrels will fail at the exact same, po exact same point and that will be due to heat. It will have nothing to do with the uh, heat of the bolt carrier. It will have nothing to do with uh, anything else. Uh, the barrel will hit transformation temperature and the barrel will blow. The gas systems will last just as long. These are properly made mill spec gas tubes for the internal piston so, you're, so your barrel is going to go before the, uh, the gas tube is going to. So overall, I think Estonia got themselves one hell of a rifle. Uh, LMT has done a lot of work to improve the rifle for them. I know they have uh, improved the trigger. Uh, the Estonia rifle has a trigger very much like that of the uh, HK416, uh, which enables you to put the rifle on safe with the hammer forward. No matter what condition the hammer is in, you can you can put the safety on. You also have a round tra a round counter uh, that's in the, the pistol grip, so it'll help with maintenance. So you have electronic uh, record of how many rounds were fired, so you know what you're going to be doing. Used for a stock is is one of the uh, the Magpul stocks for the uh, Estonia contract, rather than the you know, the larger, heavier Magpul. Um, but overall, uh, it's it's an excellent rifle. Estonia, the Estonia rifle will be coming out to the general public at some point. Uh, LMT is very hard to get anything from at the moment. Uh, there will be a reference rifle coming out. Uh, I've been assured that I will be getting one, and you'll be getting a first look at it, hopefully from me, uh, when that comes out. Uh, but overall, the system, um, as I said, I never paid much attention to it just due to the fact that I am an internal uh, internal piston fan. But uh, after taking the time, it took a little bit longer than I wanted to just because of the fact ammunition was not available. Uh, I had to wait for ammunition to become available to, to do the testing. And overall, there was about 5,000 rounds that were fired between all three barrels. Again, most of it was the 14.5 was the and the, the 12.5. There wasn't much done with the 16-inch. Uh, I wanted to go with the, with the barrels that were used by uh, Estonia. And again, the 14.5 is close as I can get to the 14.3. And of course, the 12.5 is the same. Uh, and I was, I was certainly very pleased. So this uh, this is probably one of the first times anybody's done any kind of testing, uh, you know, for, especially for the for the internet for YouTube uh, on the durability and reliability of the of this rifle. Again, this is a longer video. You're seeing a lot of shooting footage because that's what we wanted to show you was the reliability. So I hope you all enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.